further ado, I would like to present you with our first group, Floating Lemons. Take it away. Hi, thank you so much, Joey. So we are Team Floating Lemons and we are super excited to be kicking off our graduation showcase today. We're gonna to start by showing you our app, Make Space. Next slide, please. So before we get fully into it, you might be wondering why on earth are we called Team Floating Lemons? Well, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. So during our daily stand-ups, it was the rotating host duty to bring a fun fact of the day. This was just to get our morale up and get our spirits up to face our day of coding. On one of these occasions, one of our wonderful North Coast Coders tutors joined us and actually surprised us by delivering her own fact. This was that lemons float while limes sink. Now, of course, throughout the whole project phase, we definitely didn't want to be in any sinking spirits. So we decided that we were going to embody quite literally that uplifting character of the lemons, hence Team Floating Lemons. Now within this team, we have myself, Kat, we also have Jonathan, we have Kyle, and we have Scarlett. Next slide, please. So throughout the project, we were a mix of in-person and remote, and we decided to use Agile-inspired methodology throughout. This includes Kanban frameworks. In our case, this was a Trello board. And we also used wireframing to plan our project, as you can see there. We also took two days to spike our technology. D during this, we split into pairs and looked at the front and back end uh, aspects. We also, throughout the entire nine days of the project, stayed in pairs, uh, rotating to ensure that we all got uh, a go on all the different ends and all the different technologies that were available. This meant there were two eyes for debugging, um, and also we just got to share our experiences as we went. Of course, we also stuck to our test-driven development, our good old friend, to ensure that our code was very robust, clear, and accessible for everyone. So now I'm gonna pass you on to Kyle, who is gonna show you our wonderful MakeSpace app. Okay, thank you, Kat. So yeah, this is MakeSpace. Um, it's a multi-platform app. This is our login screen and our sign-up screen. So we're gonna sign in now using an already used uh, username, Floating Lemon. We're also gonna purposely put the password in wrong, but sadly you can't see this due to a inbuilt iOS safety feature. Okay, so as you can see, Floating Lemon is taken. So we're gonna to go to Floating Lemons. Password is incorrect, so we're gonna put in a matching password. This is our, pe this is our page. We're gonna search all of our listings by city. As you can see, we have lots of lovely uh, listings here. And we're gonna to go to the top one. We're gonna to go to a stunning rooftop terrace. As you can see, uh, it's got a very high rating, lots of amenities at the bottom. And we're gonna click on Rosa's user profile. This has her information and all the listings she owns. We're now gonna scroll down to the bottom. She we're gonna make a booking. We're gonna book the 21st of this month. We've booked, thank you for your booking. We're gonna click on again and we'll now see the 21st is grayed out. We can also see Rose's contact details. And we can also write a review. It's a five-star review. It's a very uh, lovely establishment. And once this review is posted, we can click on reviews and see it's already there rendered for us. So now we're gonna go back to all of our listings and we can click on the map and see where they are geographically. We can see they're all in Manchester. We can even zoom out and see the, the ones a bit further afield. So now we've done this, we're gonna filter our listings. We can filter by price. We can also filter by amenities and size, as you can now see. You can sort by these things. You can sort by space rating, price, and alphabetically. And you can do it ascending or descending. So now you're gonna make a space, a selling point. We're gonna make the North Coders branch. It's in the heart of Manchester. It's a very large space. You know, it's a lovely place to learn how to code. This may or may not be the CEO's personal phone number. And now we're gonna upload a picture. This is being handled by Firebase. We're gonna say what amenities it has, and then we're gonna submit it. And we'll scroll down to the bottom of our listings and we'll see it's at the bottom. This is because at the minute it has no ratings. We're now gonna go onto our user profile. We're gonna add a profile photo. This is Team Floating Lemons. And we're gonna change our username. 
the team floating lemons. And now we can also see our listings. We only have one because we've just made this account. And if we scroll down, because this is our listing, we can delete it. Other users cannot delete other users' listings. Thank you for looking at our app. And I'll now pass on to John to talk about our tech, uh, our tech stack. Thanks, thanks, Carl. So for our backend tech stack, we use Node.js and Express. This was because on the course, we had quite extensive experience using these, and we were quite comfortable at creating routers, models, and controllers using these two. For our database, we use MongoDB and Mongoose to interact with it. When we formed as a team, we had this ethos to always sort of push and challenge ourselves. And as we hadn't used a NoSQL database before on the course, it made sense to try MongoDB because of its popularity. The whole development of the back end was test driven. A mocker and chai were our testing suites. This just tested all our integration tests between our roots and our database. In the words of Chris Whitty, next slide, please. On our front end, we knew we wanted to make a cross-platform uh, mobile app. And as we'd already used React.js on the North Coders course, it made sense to branch out to try React Native instead of something brand new such as Flutter. The sort of motto of React Native is learn once, write anywhere, which is exactly what we wanted to do. The project was Expo managed because when we were spiking, we really liked the developer environment that Expo gave you. It was really useful having the simulator on your laptop, but also at a moment's notice, being able to have it on our phone live and interact with it as if, as we, as, as if we were a user. Any form we used was uh, created using Formic, and when we combined it with Yuck validation, it ensured that only valid data was being submitted to our database through those forms. Firebase was used for authentication, as we saw in the demo there for logging and signing up, but we also used it for storing of the images. Axios handled all our API requests, both externally and also to the API we set up to our back end. We also like the parameters it gives you for queries. And as we had a lot of queries, things like size, price, whether it has a toilet, uh, Axios makes it really easy just to put those into your API requests. Most of the styling was done by ourselves, but there was the odd moment where we had to use React Native Paper to drop in a pre-made style component. These are so ubiquitous that we know any user would know instantly how to use them and that, that knew that it'd be clickable and that this means that this is loading. And because they're so familiar, it just gave it a professional and more polished look. I'm going to hand over to Scarlett now who's going to talk through all our barriers. Thank you, John. Yeah, so just like all the other teams that we naturally encountered some barriers during this final project phase. Of course, the first one was um, merge conflict because everyone was using Giga, GitHub. So the first time we had a big merge, it broke the code and it took us a long time to fix it. So after that, we decided to merge regularly. Everyone's code was up to date and we also ensure that we all sit together whenever we do merging. And uh, we ensure that we pull the code immediately, run it, and if there were errors, we fix the errors. So that was um, our new back to practice of using GitHub and version control. Um, image uploading and map view, they are pretty much the same and they were both new to us. And at the beginning, we couldn't figure it out and couldn't make it working properly. But with lots of uh, Googling and of course, trial and error, we finally made it and it turned into very cool features in our app. Uh, with React, React Native and Expo, some packages have different versions and it did cause a lot of confusion. So for this part, we went to the online tech community using resources like GitHub, Free CodeCamp, and um, Stack Overflow, which is a really good one. So although there were some hurdles, as a team, we worked together and found the solutions all within a very short time. Uh, next slide, please. So if we had more time, we would love to add some more cool features in our app. Uh, filtered by distance, of course, because we had the map function. And we, were, we would be using GeoLab package to, make, uh, to get that done. Uh, In-app payment by using some relative tags such as Stripe. And of course, instant message. Um, uh, we would have used socket.io or Firebase. Next slide, please. Yeah, so that's pretty much all about our app. Thank you very much. <laughs>